Unit 9, Day 5, Segment Length in Circles. If two chords intersect in the interior of the circle, then the product of the lengths of the segments of one chord is equal to the product of the lengths of the segments in the other chord. So what this is saying is if you have two chords that intersect inside the circle, then you're going to take one of those chords and the two different parts, A, and multiply it times C, and that's going to equal the other chord when you take B and multiply it by D. So let's do a couple example problems with this one. So we're going to take a look at this one, and we're going to take one chord. It doesn't matter which one first. So we have this chord. The two parts are X and 5. Multiply those. So we put 5 times X. And that's going to equal the other chord multiplying the two parts, 6 times 10. So when we go through and solving for x, we just want to keep 5x and then multiply 6 times 10 gives us 60. And then our last step, divide by 5. And then we'll get x is equal to 12. Go ahead and pause and try the next one and then check back with me to see if you got the right answer. Hopefully you started off with the equation 8 times 3 equals 6 times x and then you found x equal to 4. In this theorem it says if two secant segments share the same endpoint outside a circle, then the product of the length of one secant segment and the length of its external segment equals the product of the length of the other secant segment and the length of its external segment. Now it's a lot of words, so I want you to pay attention to the diagram and I'm going to give you a short little way to remember how to find the length of these segments. So if you follow this formula in my color-coded diagram, we're going to take A times A plus B and that's going to equal C times C plus D. So the way I want you to remember this is the short part on the outside times the whole thing, and of course you get the whole thing by adding those two, equals the short part on the outside times the whole thing. Now this is really going to help you remember this, so I want you to repeat it to yourself a couple times. The short part on the outside times the whole thing equals the short part on the outside times the whole thing. Okay. Now let's work through a couple examples and remember our little phrase that we're going to use to help us. So we have the short part on the outside times the whole thing. And it tells us, instead of giving us a measurement here, it tells us that the whole thing is x. So we're just going to put 5 times x. And that equals the short part on the outside, 6, times the whole thing is going to be 6 plus 4, which gives us 10. So now we want to go through and solve for x. So this is 5 times x. 6 times 10 is 60. And then we divide by 5. And you get x is equal to 12. Go ahead and pause. I want you to try the second example, <clears throat> which is just like our first one with different numbers. And then I want you to give this third example a try. It's a little different, but I think you'll be able to figure it out. Then when you're finished, check back with me and see how you did. Now for the second one, hopefully you started off with that equation. 3, the short part on the outside, times x, the whole thing, equals 5, the short part on the outside, times the whole thing would be 5 plus 10. So then that gives us 3x equals 5 times 15, 3x equals 45, and hopefully you got x equal to 15. Now the second one is slightly different. When you look at the secant that has numbers, we have the short part on the outside 4 times the whole thing, which is 4 plus 7. That part should be the same as what we've been doing in the other two examples. Now the only part that's a little tricky is the other side. 3 is the short part on the outside. Then we need to multiply that times the whole thing. To find that whole thing, okay, 
you need to do the same idea. 4 plus 7 gives you the entire length of that secant. So 3 plus x gives you the entire length of that secant. So it's going to be 3, the short part on the outside, times 3 plus x, the whole thing. Then here we need to distribute. 3 times 3 gives us 9 and then 3 times positive x gives us a positive 3x. This side is the same, 4 plus 7 is 11, 4 times 11 gives us 44, and then we can subtract 9 from both sides, divide by 3, and you should have gotten x equals 11.7. This next theorem is very similar, but it's just dealing with the secant and tangent. It says, if a secant segment and a tangent segment share an endpoint outside a circle, then the product of the length of the secant segment and the length of its external segment equals the square of the length of the tangent segment. So in this one, it's the same idea. For the secant, we have the exact same thing we did before. The short part on the outside times the whole thing. But then it's going to be equal to the tangent segment multiplied by itself because the short part on the outside is exactly the same as the whole thing. So we have a times a plus b is equal to c squared. Let's do a couple examples. So we'll start off the same as we did on the previous examples. The short part on the outside times the whole thing, which is going to be our 4 plus 12, and that's going to equal our tangent squared. So we have 4 times 4 plus 12 is 16 equals x squared. 4 times 16 is going to give us 64 equal to x squared. And then remember, we need to take the square root of both sides in order to get rid of this. The square root and squared cancel out, so we're left with x and then the square root of 64 is going to be 8, and that's our final answer. Go ahead and pause. I want you to try the second and third example. Third one's a little different, but I'm sure you can do it, and then check back with me and see if you got the right answer. For the second example, short part on the outside, 3, times the whole thing, 3 plus 24, should equal the tangent squared, x squared. So we get 3 times 27 equals x squared, 81 equals x squared, take the square root of both sides and you should get x equals 9. Now on the second one, we have this notation again telling you that 16 is the length of the whole thing. And then this time, the x is that short part outside. So we have x, the short part on the outside, times the whole length is 16. Now you have to be really careful. 16 is the whole length, so don't get in the habit of just putting x plus 16 every time. That's not going to work. So we have x times 16 equals the tangent 12 squared. x times 16 is 16x, 12 squared is 144, and then when you divide by 16, you get x equals 9. Here's another example regarding secants in a circle, and we're going to use the same relationship we did before, short part on the outside times the whole thing equals short part on the outside times the whole thing, except it's going to involve a little more algebra work in this problem. So let's walk through this one step by step. We have the short part on the outside times the whole thing, our x plus 10. <clears throat> and that's going to equal the short part on the outside times the whole thing, which is our 8 plus 8. Now, over here, <clears throat> you can't add x plus 10 together, so that means we're going to have to distribute this x. x times x is x squared. x times positive 10 is a positive 10x, and that equals 8 plus 8, this is going to be 16, so that gives us 8 times 16, which is 128. Now, the problem here is we have an x squared, an x term, and a constant, 
and the way that we can solve for x has to be either factoring or the quadratic formula. Now some of you might be a little rusty on your factoring, and the other thing is factoring doesn't work every time. Quadratic formula will always work. So we're going to use the quadratic formula, and don't worry, this is given to you on your geometry SOL formula sheet, so you don't have to memorize it. And in case you forgot from when you did this in Algebra 1, the quadratic formula, x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And this is where ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So here's the formula to solve for x, and this basically tells you what's going to be a, b, and c. So it needs to be ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So this equation needs to be set equal to 0 before we can use the quadratic formula. So the first thing we're going to need to do is subtract 128 from both sides. Now when we do that, this side cancels out to 0, but you can't subtract 128 from x squared or 10x. So you're just left with this equation, x squared plus 10x minus 128 equals 0. Now we need to go through and assign what's a, b, and c. So a is the term in front of x squared, that coefficient, which is our invisible 1. b is the coefficient of x which is positive 10, and c is going to be our constant. Now we just want to go through and plug in those numbers into our formula. So we're going to have x is equal to negative, our b was 10, plus or minus the square root of b, which is 10 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 128, all over 2 times a, which is 1. At this point, we're just going to be simplifying. I'm just going to use different colors each line so that you can tell the difference between my work because it's going to get kind of crowded. So negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 10 squared is 100 minus negative 4 times 1 times negative 128 gives us a positive 512 all over 2 times 1 is 2. Then negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 100 plus 512 is 612 all over 2. And then we want to take the square root of 612 and then you should get 24.7 over 2. At this point, this is where we actually need to separate the problem into two different ones. We're going to take negative 10 plus 24.7 over 2 and negative 10 minus 24.7 over 2. So we're just separating the plus and minus into two different problems. This first one, you should get x is equal to 7.35, and the second one, x is equal to negative 17.35. Now, we don't ever want to talk about lengths being negative, so this answer is not going to work for us. So this is going to be our final answer. Now I want you to take a look at this problem, pause, and then try this using the quadratic formula the same as we did in the example before, and then check back with me to see if you got it right. So I know this one had really big numbers if you worked this out on your own, but hopefully you got through it. Um, you should have started out with the short part on the outside, 5x, times the whole thing, which is 5x plus 9, equal to the tangent squared, 13 squared. So when you distribute that, you get 25x squared plus 45x equals 169. Subtract the 169 from both sides. Then you take a, b, and c, plug it into the quadratic formula, and then you should simplify one step at a time like we did before, and then you'll end up with your two different answers, x equals 1.9 and x equals negative 3.7. And again, we don't want the negative answer, so we're just going to take x equals 1.9. If that's not what you got, make sure you check your work carefully with mine to see where you made a mistake. That's all.